So I will talk about a new method for explainable k-means. This walk is a joint walk with Sandra Deshkupta, Nevef Ross, and Cyrus Swatchen, and it appeared at ICMO 2020. So before I start, I wanted to know, have you used the clustering algorithm in the last year? And for those of you who did, when you got the clustering, have you ever wondered why you got this specific clustering? Understanding the reasoning behind machine learning models is important, especially these days as machine learning is entering high-tech fields like transportation and healthcare. We cannot rely blindly on ML prediction. For example, a doctor will never perform a surgery just because a computer told him so. He needs to understand why. He needs an explanation. What is an explanation? So here's an example of explanation. This is a small flow chart where at each step we ask a simple question like what is the temperature? What makes this explanation? It's small and we ask a simple question. Or in other words, we have a small decision tree. What we want to do in this work is take this idea of explainability into the realm of k-means clustering. So what, what is it? So in this problem, we have a data set S, and the goal is to partition it into k parts, such that the, the k-means cost is small, Well, the k-means cost is simply the square distance between a point and its uh, average. What we see in this figure is a data set with an optimal k-means clustering into five parts. So notice that this is not really explainable because the cluster identity depends on many features. So in this case, there are only two features, X and Y, so it's not that bad, but more generally when it's high dimensional, small decision tree is just impossible. So what we want is explainable clustering. And what do I mean by that? I want a clustering that is defined by a small decision tree. A small possible decision tree is a tree with k leaves. So here's an example of, uh, of uh, the data set that we had before. And now a different data set and a different, uh, the same data set and a different clustering with uh, a clustering defined by the decision tree on the right. So what we see in here is a decision tree with five leaves and each leaf corresponds to a cluster. And in each inner node, what we see is some feature, in this case, X or Y, and some threshold. The decision tree on the right defines the clustering in the middle. We see that the clustering in the middle and the clustering on the left looks pretty much the same, pretty close, which is great because it means that for this specific data set, we can have an explainable clustering. But can we do it for every data set? So this is exactly what we are researching in this work. So we are okay with a uh, clustering that it won't be optimal, but we want it to be explainable. The way we formalize it is using an approximated algorithm. So an algorithm is, is an A approximation if the k-means cost is at most A times the optimal. Using the approximation algorithm is nothing new for that clustering world, because we know that something came into exactly the NP health problem. So people had to use the approximation algorithm for solving this problem, and now we are just using it for solving the explainability problem. Okay, so in order to really appreciate the problem, let's focus for now on the case of K equal to. So what we want is to solve the problem when there are two clusters. And when we say an explainable clustering, what we want is to decide the cluster identity using only one feature and one threshold. That's it. Sounds really crazy. It sounds like if you're just using something so local as one feature and one threshold, it's simply not enough in order to, to have good results. What we do show is that that is possible. What do I mean by that? I mean that we were able to prove the following theorem. We were able to show that for any data set, there is always a threshold cut, some clustering that depends on only one feature and one threshold. 
such that the cost is at most four times the optimal one. So notice that we have an approximation algorithm that is independent on the, on the dimension and the number of points. And it's only four, it's pretty small constant. This theorem immediately also gives us an efficient algorithm. Let's go over all possible cuts. And this can be done efficiently using dynamic programming. And what about the general case? So for general case, we design a new algorithm, the iterative mistake minimization algorithm. And in this algorithm, we first run some uh, unexplainable clustering algorithm. Then we label each example with, with its cluster. And then what we do is at each step, we find the cut with minimal number of mistakes. Mistakes is a new notion that we define in the paper, where it means that for each a node, we say that the point X is a mistake for this node if X and its center reach this, this node and then they verge us. In order to understand what it means, let's look at an, an example. So we have a data set, and first we colored each point with uh, its cluster. Then at each step, what we did is found some split that has a minimal number of mistakes. And then at the end, what we got is a decision tree with five leaves. And this defines as an explainable k-means clustering. Also notice that this algorithm is really efficient. Its running time is only k d n log n, where k is the number of clusters, d is the number of features, and n is the number of points. And a cool thing about this uh, algorithm that it has provable guarantees. For the first time, there is an algorithm for explainable k-means clustering. So what are the provable guarantees? We were able to show the DIAM-M algorithm is an O of k-squared approximation. Again, notice this an approximation doesn't depend on the dimension and the number of points. Okay, so let's summarize our results. So we have results for k-means and for k-medians, where the cost is instead of L2 squared, it's L1, and we have lower bounds and upper bounds. What we are able to show that for two means, there, there is an upper bound of four and there is a lower bound of three. So uh, we see that the right answer, the price of explainability is some number between three and four. For two medians, the price of explainability is exactly two. For general k, for k means it's somewhere between k squared and log k, and for k medians is something between k and log k. Okay, so now how does IMM behave in practice? So we compare the algorithm, the IMM, to uh, three other algorithms that um, return some decision tree for a clustering algorithm. Uh, so we compared our uh, results on a few data sets, on small one and on larger one. And what we wrote in each cell is simply the approximation. We want this value to be as small as possible, hopefully as close as possible to one. What we saw is that our algorithm, the unknown algorithm, performs really well and actually beats its competition. And also notice that the number that we get is really small. It's really close to one. For example, we have 1.11 or 0.22, pretty small. You can find the code in uh, our GitHub. And let's look on the running time of our algorithm. So we compare the running time of the IMM algorithm to the k-means uh, time. Uh, it's an uh, implementation of the k-means in scikit-learn. And what we say is that IMM is, is comparable to k-means. Uh, one last example, uh, we took the 20 news loop, we took four subjects out of that, and then ran our IMM algorithm. Each feature was a word. And what we saw is that IMM was able to understand completely by its own that, for example, if we want to uh, um, understand if there is the word Jesus, then the, um, the example probably relates to Christianity. So just to summarize that, 
and we designed a new algorithm, the MNAM algorithm, that finds an explainable clustering. This is the first algorithm with provable guarantees for explainable k-means. We showed some upper bound and some lower bound. And what we saw is that this algorithm is good in practice, it's fast, and it has small cost. So next time that you need a clustering algorithm, why not use this one to get explainability for free? Thank you. Okay, so we have one question. Um, how do you evaluate the explanations? So we evaluate using uh, calculating the k-means cost of the clustering. 